Hi everyone, welcome back for another video, an energy update video for the month of January. Lots to tell you, it's not a boring month, lots of data to present and uh, lots of testing and changes. So let's get into the details so that this video isn't too long. Um, one of the big changes we've done this month is of doing a test with the oil boiler. I've actually had it on for the month of January, but only for our bathroom radiators and one bedroom, Charlotte's room. So three bathrooms, one bedroom, the oil boil has been on every day in the month of January for an hour in the morning and an hour in the evening. Now the benefit from that is once the radiators are up to temperature, even though the hour's over, that heat stays in the radiator for probably maybe another hour thereafter. So we've had a really good test of experiencing the difference again between using the oil boiler and using just electricity to see what the result is. And I've got to say that um, this sensation of heating in the bathrooms, because we've been living for a couple of months now without any heat in our bathrooms, um, has been really, really nice. It's been nice to get back to having warm bathrooms um, for that early and late period of the day. And analysing the cost hasn't seemed that bad. I used a stick method of just measuring the oil usage for the month and it was one sixth of 200 litres approximately. So approximately 33 litres of oil used for one month of heating in an hour in the morning, an hour in the evening, just three bathrooms and one bedroom. So if I doubled that time, it probably wouldn't double the cost. So, because obviously once you're up to temperature, then it's easier for the boiler to keep that water up to temperature than it is to bring it up to the temperature in the first place. So anyway, the cost, 65 pence a litre at the moment for kerosene. So that's roughly 21 pounds for one month usage of an hour in the morning, an hour in the evening just for the bathrooms. So with the cloakroom that we have an infrared panel in, we're using between one and two kilowatt hours a day for that panel, depending on how long it's on. So probably two to three hours of it being on is the equivalent of one hour of the boiler being on in the cloakroom, and it'll be a little bit more in the larger bathrooms. So I'm probably thinking five kilowatt hours for the three bathrooms is a comparable energy usage of electricity to the um, oil boiler. So five kilowatt hours, and we're currently paying 10 pence per kilowatt hour, approximately, um, without a home storage battery. So five kilowatt hours, 10 pence, that's 50p a day, times 30 is 15 pounds. So 15 pounds compared to 21 pounds. Electricity seems to win, electricity seems to be cheaper but that's on my current rate of electricity. In September, that's likely to double with the current electricity prices. So if that doubles, electricity will be more expensive to heat than um, oil. Uh, so it's somewhere between comparable and actually oil being cheaper still than what electricity is with the high energy prices at the moment. And talking about high energy prices, I saw on Twitter a while ago, somebody was showing their um, new renewal quote. So they've moved energy supply, they had to, they're moving house, and uh, their new energy costs for gas and electricity were five grand, 5,000 pounds. Now you think about that, that's over 400 pounds a month. And as I explained in the uh, recent video that I did talking about the economies of putting solar panels and batteries on and how that helps in retirement, that you need to earn less money, the same applies here. Five grand of energy prices. That means you've got to earn 5,000 pounds to pay for that. So if it's doubled from two and a half normally in a year to five, you've got to earn two and a half thousand pounds more. And of course, when you're earning it, you're paying tax on it as well. So it's another 20% higher as well. So five grand is really six grand you've got to earn. Five grand net of tax before you can actually pay that bill. That's a huge amount of money, isn't it? A huge proportion of income going towards energy. And it's scary bills like that, the doubling and troubling of energy that we're seeing at the moment. It really makes you think that solar energy and home storage batteries really, really pay dividends. And hopefully you'll see that in the stats that I'm now about to present. So more changes. Yes, we've got scaffolding up on the house and we've got more solar panels going on. I am adding another 2.9 kilowatts of solar panels, but more on that later. The difference is occurring from about the 19th of January. So we are seeing 
better generation in the second half of January, but also we took out the Huawei home storage battery. So since the 19th of January, I have not had a home storage battery working. I am in the process of having a new one installed, more details on that in another video, uh, but it's not fully commissioned yet, so it's not working. So I'm not benefiting from cheap energy overnight stored in a home storage battery for use during the day and during the night. So my energy consumption and my average price per kilowatt hour has gone up. Um, in this graph alone, it just shows the price per kilowatt hour that I'm paying. And as you can see, mostly when we had a battery, it was five to six pence a kilowatt hour. Now it's uh, heading eight, nine, 10 and above pence per kilowatt hour. So yeah, home storage battery is making a significant difference when you've got it and you can use cheap rate energy throughout the day and throughout the night. So for me, that's the aim to get a battery that will cover our entire day. But interesting in this graph, if you look at it and you see on the left hand side, those two spikes in the period where we did have a home storage battery, that was an interesting thing to see that if I added a larger home storage battery, those spikes would disappear and I would continue to use just five pence per kilowatt hour of electricity. So adding a home storage battery has a good effect and it saves money every day by using cheap rate energy. But when the returns are smaller by adding more batteries, adding a bigger battery, it is diminishing returns. So you do have to size it right to hit the large bulk of savings that you want and not oversize it if you're concerned about return on investment and how much money you're saving by having a home storage battery. Sizing it is quite key and you can see that from this image. So more information to come, separate videos on the solar panels and home storage battery, the ultimate home storage battery that I'm installing. I'll do those videos separately as soon as we're fully up and commissioned here. But uh, this video, monthly update for January. So here we go, here's the stats. Hope you enjoy it. Starting off with solar generation, that's 310 kilowatt hours for the month of January. That's three times what we had in December and more than what we had in November as well. So January was really a bumper month. The breakdown of that 310 kilowatt hours was 107 kilowatt hours from the Huawei solar inverter, 74 kilowatt hours from the Solis inverter and 129 kilowatt hours from Solar Edge. Having a look at the January comparison just with the Solar Edge statistics, the 129 kilowatt hours, you can see that it's definitely a significant chunk more than the last two Januarys, but it's also more than February. So these extra panels definitely helping. Looking at the numbers for previous years, the 310 kilowatt hours, that's nearly 50% more than what we've had in previous years. 50%, now most of that is down to just lots of sunshine in January, but some of it, yep, those extra panels from the 19th of January. That's 49 kilowatt hours per kilowatt of solar panels installed, but of course that number is going to reduce as I add more solar panels. Home energy usage, that was 585 kilowatt hours, still quite high because we're heating our home with just electricity, or mostly electricity this month. And uh, Eddie, that's all of our hot water, that was 186.6 kilowatt hours. Surprisingly, these numbers are very, very similar to the last month's in December. Import from the grid, that was 130 kilowatt hours less than December at only 437 kilowatt hours. Still quite high, but 130 kilowatt hours less because we generated more solar energy, so we didn't need to import it. Export back to the grid, that was quite low still at 20 kilowatt hours, but as we get more solar energy in spring and summer, we're obviously going to be exporting more. Hopefully I can save some of it though in our larger home storage battery. So we're on the Octopus Go tariff, that's a three hour version of it, um, very cheap in the early hours of the morning. And we paid £41.36 for those 437 kilowatt hours. And look at the price it would have been if we were on Agile, £140. We saved £100 by being on the Go tariff this month. And the average price per kilowatt hour that we paid was 7.69 pence. As I said, some of that was higher than it would otherwise be because we de-implemented the home storage battery on the 19th of January. Looking back at December, we obviously used more kilowatt hours, as I said, and we paid £45.72 for that energy, but it was cheaper on average, just 6.75 pence per kilowatt hour. 
Battery storage, as I said, that was removed midway through the month, but we did put 84 kilowatt hours into the battery and got 80 kilowatt hours out. So that's 80 kilowatt hours at cheap rate energy of just 4.5 pence a kilowatt hour. So this My Energy app, that's quite a good summary to show. So although the numbers are slightly different, the accuracy level on My Energy is slightly different to the other inverters. But consumption here, 771 kilowatt hours consumed, 331 kilowatt hours generated. It's saying we imported 456 kilowatt hours and we exported 16 kilowatt hours, 41% green overall. Pretty good. This last chart from My Energy, if you look at the bottom uh, where the yellow export is showing, hardly any days with export. That's what we like to see, especially in winter. We need to use all of the energy we generate. As always, thank you so much for watching. Hope that was useful. Hope there was some data there, good comparisons. Again, as always, I do like to see in the comments what generation you have had in different areas of the country or different countries and uh, what so size solar configuration you've got. How have you been getting on? Have you made any changes? Are you planning a new solar installation? Obviously, these videos are aimed at those who have got solar and batteries already, but also those that are considering it. Hopefully, there's some information here to show you how good solar and home storage batteries are. Do you really want thousands of pounds as your home energy bills, or would you rather have hundreds like we do? Uh, yeah, having solar and having batteries is a godsend at the moment with high energy prices. Thank you so much again for watching and for subscribing. Yes, subscribers are creeping towards 10,000. I cannot believe that. I cannot believe just for a few years that I've been doing this, I have 10,000 subscribers and thousands of people are watching these videos every time I release them. So thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Whether you click the bell icon for notifications or not, I really don't mind. I don't know whether YouTube makes that a better thing or not. If you want the notifications, that's great. If you don't, turn them off. Anyway, thanks again. See you again soon for more videos. Electric cars. Oh, did I not mention my electric car is uh, on the way? I've heard it has been built. Not only do I have a build slot, it's been built. And they're planning and getting dates now for the delivery, delivery to the dealership. And then I can work out getting it for myself. So just a few weeks away, hopefully, and I'll have my new electric car. So I can't wait to show you that as well. Take care. See you again soon. Bye for now. And just for those that watched to the very last second, I thought I'd include this. Um, the video editor has just included a new feature to add voice animation. So, Nigel the Chipmunk. Anyway, thanks again. See you again soon for more videos. Electric cars. Oh, did I not mention? My electric car is uh, on the way. Oh.